Lionheart is John claude Van Damme's 1990 mega blockbuster hit where he finally proved to the world that he could do more than just movies about underground fighting in faraway countries. He can do movies about underground fighting in America too. In another Van Damme first, the movies all put into motion because of his brother. During a drug deal, they pour gasoline on him and light him on fire. Why do they do that? The answer is, who gives a sh**? All that matters is it gets us Van Damme, so stop complaining, you whiny little sh**. This is the brothers' family. Their role is to grind the movie to a screeching halt whenever they're on screen. They're at the hospital visiting the brother who's in, oh my god! Neo. Neo. Anyways, Van Damme is in the French Foreign Legion who, to nobody's surprise, are total dicks. I need to see my brother. You need what I tell you you need. But he's Van Damme, so they're also totally f He puts on an incredible display of kicks, spin kicks, more kicks, and more spin kicks. He defeats the Legionnaires so badly that not only does France retreat, but they also officially declare war just so they can retreat twice. Later, bitches. They go after him, but even though it's a wide open desert, they somehow lose him. There is no sign of him, sir. We all know that's bullshit. You just didn't want to get your asses kicked again, and that's the best you could come up with. So now these two unlucky sons of bitches are given the task of bringing him back. Good luck with that. Van Damme makes it to New York with just the clothes on his back so he makes money the only way he knows how. By beating the ever-loving out of people. He is so incredible that this guy, Joshua, becomes his manager and takes him to meet Cynthia, who's completely f***ing nuts. You're French? What's the difference? In fact, all the women in this movie are insane. That just came out of his nose, you fucking psycho. But whatever, we haven't seen Van Damme fight in almost five full minutes, which is bullshit. So right after the obligatory Stan Lee cameo, Hey, I got three to one against Lionheart. They put him up against Dennis Reynolds, who says what everyone was already thinking. I don't know if I want to fight you or fuck you. That's why you don't say that out loud, dipsh**. Van Damme and Joshua go to call a cab, and they somehow end up in West Side Story. Shut up, man. This gang's entire identity revolves around this payphone. You want to use our phone? We'll go someplace else. Don't worry about it. But you don't like my phone, huh? As adorable as that is, Van Damme has had a long day and is in no mood for your sh**. Ah! Today's your lucky day, punk. Since he finally kicked enough asses to afford a ticket to LA, plus I'm pretty sure they're wanted for this guy's murder. Hey man, you wanna use the phone? Come on, let's go. They get the hell out of New York and Van Damme goes to see his brother who just died. 
So he goes to visit his brother's wife, and she is just the worst. So you finally decided to grace us with your presence. Ellen, I tried. I'm sorry. I don't want you anywhere near me or my daughter again. He single-handedly took out the French Foreign Legion, a street gang, and bravely stood up to sexual harassment just to be here, and this is what he gets. Get out of here before I call the cops! The only thing that could cheer him up now is some delicious Kentucky Fried Chicken. These guys know what I'm talking about. So Joshua hooks Van Dam up with a place to stay. Hey, 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 hey. Look around. Which also happens to be her place. What happened to my clothes? I gave them to the valet. Instructions to burn them. I didn't even know valets do that. You told them to burn my clothes. <laughs> Give me a break. Give you a break? That's some really crazy shit you did there, lady. <laughs> and now, the reason we all love Van Damme movies, the silly dress-up montages. You know what? Maybe I was too hard on her. She actually seems really... I'm sick of this shit! Get out! Get the f*** out! What the f*** was that? You know what? It's not important. Because we get another badass fight scene where Van Damme fights Roddy Piper while grown men ride around on roller skates. Oh, f*** yeah! After destroying at least five cars and Scotland's reputation, Van Dam is of course the winner. He takes the money and gives it to his sister-in-law, but has to pretend it's actually an insurance check. Husbands do this all the time. Yeah. Secret little insurance policy? Because of how much of a colossal bitch she is. Luckily, Van Damme knows how much of a downer we find her, so we just instantly appear right in the middle of a fight. Ah! Not just any fight, but a fight against Smasher. I'm Smasher. In a goddamn handball court. Van Damme's then just minding his own business, and the two asshole legionnaires begin chasing him. They really don't need to be in the movie, but they figured, hey, they did it in Bloodsport, so we're gonna do it here. Now the movie's just rapidly firing fight scenes at us, and it's fucking awesome! This time, he fights Tarzan in a partially filled pool. This movie has fucking everything. Now the movie tries to give us more of the Legionnaire side plot that nobody gives a shit about. Not even the director, who plays the music so comically loud. Supposed to take you back. Anyway, we can. Just give me one week to get the money for them. That you can barely hear what anybody's saying. Your time was up in the desert. And we still owe you for that one. Van Damme manages to get away, but not before suffering a catastrophic rib injury. Luckily, he has one of the finest doctors in the country. These dudes did a number on you, our homes. Do you know what you need, man? You need karate lessons, man. That's right. He doesn't even do an x-ray. He just tells him he got his ass kicked and then prescribes karate lessons. Don't talk to nobody about my rib. Don't worry about that, man. $100, if your doctor is that excited over a hundred dollars, 
you should really get a new doctor. Now, Cynthia meets with the Legionnaires and they discuss the fighter Attila. He's undefeated and pretends to be losing to his opponents before turning it on and killing them. <laughs> Cynthia agrees to hand Van Dam over to them, but they have to wait until he loses to Attila. I will hand him over to you, as is. I don't know why the French military gives a shit about what she wants, why they think she has any way of handing Van Dam over, or how fucking stupid you have to be to think Van Dam's going to lose. <laughs> He's the star of the movie, you idiot. <laughs> now we meet Attila, and one thing's clear, he really loves cats. I mean, really loves cats. He actually brings his cat to his underground fights. Attila begins toying with Van Dam and quickly learns about his broken rib and starts taking advantage. Instead of finishing him off though, Attila forgets where he is and what he's doing and walks away to play with the cat. Van Dam and Joshua then have a heart to heart for about five full minutes in the middle of the fight and we learn it's on him man the whole bet's on Attila fuck you man wrong bet you're damn right wrong bet now Van Dam's pissed and unleashes hell on earth <laughs> after delivering roughly 1200 kicks and 300 punches to Attila's face. Van Dam considers killing him since he planned on killing Van Dam. But then he remembers Attila has a cat that loves him and he does the right thing. He proves that if you open your heart to Van Dam, forgiveness will be yours, and he forgives Joshua. <sighs> the Legionnaires are so moved by Van Dam's act of mercy in honor of the cat that they just forgive the whole AWOL thing. Good luck. And now everyone's one big happy family. If you don't believe that Lionheart is the greatest movie ever made, then get 